It's a lot over and it's on um, TV3. I look kind of like Mohammed Murphy in these shows. The elected president of Bunny Monday, I made an atmosphere of high tension of child security in the Egypt capital. To Boston, along with protesting on the north of Islamic Muslim Brotherhood, a face charges of incitement of violence and murder is convicted or a face to death penalty. In front of me in the studio is Ibad Ibrahim, an analyst on Middle East issues. And I'm uh, from to I think um, what happens in Egypt will also be unfortunate. There was a blatant slap on the face of democracy. I'm sure there's people like the Russian Timon Ibrahim Lincoln who leads the cornerstone of democracy. So we have a quick one in utter dismay with your grace. Mostly was never a dictator, mostly was elected president. Through the ballot, through the ballot box, and not through the admission box. Mm-hmm. So I think that for if within a year they find out that they exuded so much incompetence, they were other ways of dealing with the situation. At least they could have even started an impeachment process against him, rather than probing the military to show them away the way they showed them. And that's the far sort of which person in for the infinite aspirations of the Arab state. So they tried to do things yes. And in December 2004, he wanted to control for himself some sleeping powers. He wanted presidential decrees. Now we need to be challenged by the courts. So people protested and they signed the presidential powers. And unfortunately, by the of them, that's true. They mean I guess what's in trial. Now, there is this trial. And how is this trial of separate in court? It's going to be a lose lose situation because there are two outcomes to this time. The problem is just the last sentence or a sentence to death. In either way, uh, Egypt is going to lose. And the economy of Egypt, which thrives upon tourism as well, is going to um, take a, a, a new start because people want to go to places where there is a semblance of security. So it, not, it, it doesn't look good, and it doesn't look good for Egypt, nor does it look good for the larger Middle East. You know, Egypt is the epicenter of Arab nationalism. Mm-hmm. And therefore, if Egypt is lost, the rest of the Middle East is going to burn a lot. The strongest political bloc in the region is the Arab League. It is not part of the in Egypt. Egypt is the most popular Arab country in the world, with a population of 85 million. So, in the, in the short term, what is going to happen is, if the right things are not done by the international community, if the international community does not let people like Abu Fatah stay in Rome, then in the, in the short term, there is going to be further instability in the country. Already there is an insurgency that is growing in the east of the country, the first corner, and the border regions uh, of Egypt and Israel. So, if the Egypt taken, the insurgency is going to shift and then adopt towards the center. And two months ago, there was an attempt on the life of the Israeli minister, Mohammed Zubin. So, therefore, it doesn't look good, and uh, the social community is coming in to salvage the situation. There are three ways to go about it. Now there's enough um, um, political polarization in the country. So perhaps what I think is that there should be a sense of administrative reconciliation. For those people who have lost friends and have lost black friends, they should be stuck through national reconciliation. And the second step to take is that the international community should talk an early election in Egypt. And the election should be overseen by international adverts. And then the banter of the report that on the Western government should be wrong with it. So they can take part in the political process. What the military junta has done right now is to bend the political wing of the Muslim Brotherhood mm-hmm. and the Freedom and Justice Party, and they've also confiscated, confiscated their assets. So even though Mosul is not the one calling the shots now, mm-hmm. there are both millions of people in the streets who support him. And therefore, if the Muslim Brotherhood is not included in the political process of Egypt, whoever is the elected president will be rejected by these people. And that will not augur well for the well being of the country in the long term. Right. Then in the international situation, you see that the U.S. has been uh, some sort of people somewhere with regards to the Austin of Mubarak and the insurgent attacks. What, what did they seem to benefit to the links to all these happenings? You see, the, the Muslim Brotherhood was formed in the early 1920s by Hassan al banna for so over 18 years, they were waiting for an opportunity to rule Egypt. So when the time came, they, they jumped uh, ahead of themselves 
and they wanted to lose all the political power in the country. And they also wanted to have a domino effect on other Arab countries as well. But Western style democracy was not the way to go. And therefore, the United States felt like the first expert and the model of democracy they would want to see in the Middle East. Some say that the U.S. had a hand. Uh, in the overthrow of Morsi. And it, I feel abashed as someone who follows international news that this was a legitimately elected president. He was so violently toppled. And the international community is not questioning the perpetrators of such a crime. And now we are in, in bed with them and supporting them. Uh, this, this past weekend, John Kerry, uh, who is the Secretary of the State of the United States, went to Egypt. As to what he told the military leaders, only God knows. But they have cut their annual supply of 1.3 billion uh, to the region. It's a good sign. So the U.S. should take charge. They should tell the military regime that this is not the way to go. And therefore, elections should be called as early as possible. But I think God is really talking about the Kerry in their home discussions. But what does, uh, what do the U.S. need to benefit out of all these are happening? It would be unfair to say that the United States tries to find carnage and instability in the Middle East. It will be quite unfair to say that. But the U.S. puts its money where its mouth is. Uh, if you drift away, if, if you drift away from the ideals the United States gives for the geopolitics of the region, then certainly they will have, have issues for it. The mistake Mercy made was that Mercy wanted to hold too much power in a very short possible time. And therefore, he should have taken his time. The promise they even gave the international community was that they were not going to put in a Muslim Brotherhood presidential candidate. So they took the international community by surprise. And they came with a model of democracy the world did not find comfortable. And therefore, they had a surreptitious way of serving him aside. And that is exactly what has happened in the country. Right. Well, thank you so much for speaking to us. Ibrahim is an analyst on Middle East issues. And he trained us to look at uh, the most of that, which happened uh, Today, during uh, morning till afternoon, we have more heavy looking at the uh, newspaper headlines. Don't go away, please stay. <laughs> Right, so before we go, let's take a look at uh, old newspaper uh, front page or headlines to see what is happening. We have the Business and Financial Times BFT, and we have Otia Second Rural Bank Post 46% growth in profits and Standard School Times on Transactional Product Solution Bank of Ghana will enforce capital uh, requirement of NHI. Uh, so that's all we have for you tonight. I am Kenneth Osambapu. Thank you so much for your time. I'll be here same time, same day tomorrow uh, for another edition. Good night. <laughs>